Is there a sweet spot between logical progression and change for change's sake? HTC thinks so, and it thinks the 2014 edition of its premium HTC One flagship is it. But does the new one live up to the legacy of its award-winning forebear? Let's find out. I'm Michael Fisher, this is Pocket Now, and this is HTC One versus all new HTC One. It was touted as the Android device for iPhone users. Last year's HTC One redefined the concept of a premium Android phone, fusing polycarbonate and metallic components into a beveled, precision-milled block of straight-up smartphone sexiness. 70% of its casing was made of aluminum. And it backed up the handsome face with razor-sharp wits. A Snapdragon 600 processor with 2 gigs of RAM, a 4.7-inch SLCD3 display, and speakers so good that HTC audaciously called them Boom Sound, and got away with it because their performance lived up to their bombastic name. With the next generation one, HTC builds on almost all of those, most of the plastic is gone, the new casing 90% aluminum with a brushed hairline finish on our gunmetal gray unit here. The increased metal ratio and the unit's larger size make it a few grams heavier, and it's a little more awkward in one-handed use, but the wider radius corners and wraparound construction gives it a smoother feel against the palm. The display is still SLCD3 and still 1080p, but it's seen a boost to 5 inches, that results in a small hit in pixel density, but it's not noticeable. The boom sound grills at top and bottom are similar, but behind them sit new speakers with new amplifiers and larger chamber size. HTC claims they're 20% louder, and that, plus the richer, bassier sound, makes the M8 the new king of smartphone audio. Beneath all that, the processor has been boosted to a top-of-the-line Snapdragon 801, and while it's still backed up by 2 gigs of RAM, a crucial functionality gap has been filled. In addition to the 16 or 32 gigs of onboard storage, there's now a microSD card slot, capable of accommodating cards up to 128 gigs in size. Last year's One brought us an entirely new HTC Sense experience. And while the M8 doesn't need or try to be nearly as revolutionary, it does introduce some changes with Sense version 6. Most visible are the alterations to Blink Feed, which is now much more customizable and much richer in terms of content. There's also more color throughout Sense, with accents bolder and more prevalent than on Sense 5. Some of that is welcome, it does brighten things up, but we're not necessarily sold on some of the hues HTC has chosen. Fortunately, there's the option for a monochrome theme if you want to recover some of that hip minimalism of 2013. And no matter what color you choose, Sense zips along under a finger just as quickly. It's probably the most fluid Android skin we've ever seen. A notable annoyance of the M7 has been eliminated by the new motion sensing package of the M8. While the standby key is still pretty far out of reach on the top of the device, it's less annoying here because the phone can be unlocked using a variety of on-screen gestures, some of which offer direct shortcuts into preset apps. And the polarizing capacitive keys of the M7 have been replaced by more conventional on-screen buttons in the newer device. Much of the Sense 6 feature set will eventually come to the M7 and we've covered the other software improvements more extensively in our full review of the new HTC One, available right now and linked in the description below. Go check it out after you finish this comparison. Not all improvements have been so sweeping. Almost unbelievably, HTC chose to stick with the same resolution for its primary camera this year, 4 megapixels. That's actually a lower resolution than the M8's front-facing camera, and if you're a spec head, it gets worse. There's no longer optical image stabilization. HTC's official stance is that OIS is no longer compatible with its new stereoscopic camera arrangement, and that the combination of new features in the M8 makes OIS unnecessary. Whether you agree will depend on what kind of lighting condition you're shooting in, and how sharp your eye is. 
In brightly lit situations, the output here can be quite similar between the M7 and M8. As with many smartphone viewfinders, exposure and focus are linked, and they swing pretty extremely with only minor adjustments, which is still annoying. The M8 looks to be a bit better at processing the images, with its HDR mode usually avoiding the sometimes washed out look of the M7. Low light photos from each camera are impressive in terms of how much detail they can pull from the darkness, but they're still noisy in the M8, with areas of blowout where the camera tries too hard or overexposes. The M8 has definitely improved on the white balance in low light situations though, and its new smart flash definitely helps with grabbing focus in pitch black situations. Where the real improvements come is in the software. HTC has completely rethought the camera viewfinder on the M8, with a straightforward mode select screen and a bunch of new features. From longer Zoe films, to preset manual shooting modes, to a new array of fun effects, to a totally rethought gallery. The software brings enough to keep any recreational photographer busy. That said, we did miss the persistent camcorder trigger. Okay, so about that second eyeball that gives the duo camera its name. It makes the M8 substantially weirder looking than its predecessor, so is it worth it? Well, that's going to depend entirely on how much you care about shooting with bokeh effects. The second eye is a depth sensor, allowing for variable focus after a shot is taken, and it also reduces the time necessary for the camera to get focus. HTC plans to open this hardware to developers for future improvements, so maybe we'll see something a bit more compelling come further down the line. For the moment, it's a somewhat neat trick for creating dramatic depth of field. Then there's video. Well, on the plus side, the new M8 delivers better sound and richer colors than the M7, and it has less trouble maintaining focus. On the minus side, the software stabilization doesn't provide quite as smooth a ride as the old OIS rig. Finally, the front-facing camera has seen a boost from 2 megapixels to 5, while preserving the 88-degree wide-angle lens. The added resolution is nice, and we see some white balance correction here, too. With a Snapdragon 801 going up against a Snapdragon 600, it's no surprise that the M8 beats the M7 on benchmarks. That'll matter more to you if you frequently play graphically demanding games or visit very elaborate websites, but just having that degree of power available is nice for everyone, and it helps future-proof the device. Call quality seems substantially improved on the M8, though to be fair, that may be due to some deficiency in our Google Play Edition M7. In any case, the new phone's noise cancellation is excellent, and the quick shortcut of just bringing the phone to the ear to take a call is very nice. We didn't notice a difference in signal strength using diagnostic mode, but it should be noted that our HTC One M8 is a UK edition. We'll retest with a US model when we receive one. What about the removal of Beats Audio? To be honest, we didn't notice. HTC has included a stand-in to fill its place, which you can toggle on and off in the settings menu when you plug in earphones. To our ears, the sound produced by the new EQ is almost identical to Beats. Those looking for that added bit of oomph won't be missing much. We go into battery life in more detail in our full review, so for now, we'll just say that the combination of new processor, larger power pack, and extreme power saving mode in the M8 makes the newer device the clear winner in the endurance department. So, in relation to its forerunner, the 2014 edition HTC One is a substantial step up in some areas, and a more modest upgrade in others. Aesthetically, it lacks some of the pizzazz of its trailblazing predecessor, but from where we're sitting, it's still probably the most attractive Android smartphone on the market. It may not be enough to sway M7 owners into upgrading, but the HTC One M8 does an admirable job of living up to its storied brand name. I know I said it a few times in the video, folks, but one final reminder, this is not our HTC One review. Our all-new HTC One review 
is available right now on our YouTube channel page here on YouTube and at pocketnow.com. There's a link down in the description to our full written review. Go check that out for all the details you could ask for about the new M8. Also down in the description, a like button. Please click it if you enjoyed this video. Follow us on social media and leave a comment down below letting us know whether you are planning to pick up the all-new HTC One or not and give us your reason why. Until next time, this has been Michael Fisher with Pocket Now. Thank you for watching, and we'll see you on the next one.